Hey everybody out there, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan, you're in my corner and I have a very special guest to join in the corner today who's been on the show before and uh, hopefully he will keep me um, safe from the rain and the thunder that is plaguing the desert today. I'll do my best. Now would you like to unveil your secret identity to the masses out there? My identity is no secret. Keith Silverstein. And it is so nice to talk to you again. I believe it's been, oh gosh, a year and a half since we last talked on the show. I, I think at least that. Yeah, it's, it's kind of amazing that I'm still doing this. I haven't gotten sick of you listeners yet. I mean, I love you listeners so much. Yay. Ah, <laughs> uh, I don't know. That wasn't convincing enough. Well, th- well, they love you enough to request you to come back. Oh, well, thank you. Yes. I want to know more about this rain because I'm in L.A. and uh, it's been way too hot for way too long. Really? Because it's been really weird here in Las Vegas because it'll like thunder and then it'll be like flash flood rain for like the next hour and then it goes away. <sighs> that sounds so good. What I wouldn't give for just one, just a small flash flood, just a little one. Well, I don't think a flash flood would be very nice in your area with all the traffic. <laughs> no, it probably wouldn't be good, but there would be some advantages to it at least. I'll take the rain. Well, it's getting more humid here, which is really weird and uncomfortable if you're not used to it, because this is a dry heat. Yeah, I don't, I don't like humidity. I don't like dry. I like right in the middle heat. I don't know what they call that. Is there a name for that? Not hot. <laughs> no, no, no. It's still hot, <laughs> but it's it's not super humid and it's not super dry. There must be a, a name for that. I'm not sure if there is, but the, the first thing that comes to mind is California heat because California never is so hot that I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to die of like, you know, heat exhaustion like here in the desert. Yeah, so you haven't been here recently. I'm sure it's worse there, though. Uh, sometimes it can be. But <laughs> we haven't talked in a really long time, so we have a ton of stuff that uh, we need to let the listeners know about. A lot of stuff you've been in, and one of the big things that the listeners are really curious about is this new interesting show called Tiger and Bunny. Oh, Tiger and Bunny. See, that show looks really cool to me. I'm actually looking forward to seeing it. Um, but yeah, I play uh, Kane Morris in uh, Tiger and Bunny. Uh, who's, uh, if you've seen it, he's, I don't, I don't think, unless towards the end he's suddenly in it a whole bunch, uh, he's only in it so much, uh, which means I don't know that much about the show, except I know it looks really cool. It's like a reality show uh, with superheroes. It's a show about a reality show uh, with real superheroes. Well, it seems like a lot of love from, from like Western comic fans are like mm-hmm. looking at this and being like, oh, that looks neat. Because, you know, sometimes anime and Western comic fans really don't get in the same room together without fighting about who's right. better, Batman or Naruto. So <laughs> I love those fights. <laughs> I don't like to participate. I like to watch. I like to just have some popcorn and sit on the side and see who wins. Very true, but that's that's an exciting one that I know the listeners are really in love with. So we can't. Yeah, wait. from from what I've seen of it, it's it's very funny. It's it's got a real nice like tongue and cheekness to it. I mean, it's it's it doesn't take itself too seriously. And I myself am looking forward to seeing it. I've heard really good things about it. There's a huge fan buzz. Um, I saw some really cool figures. They don't they don't make a Kane Morris figure though. Well, oh, well. you know, I, I think it's I think it's the hair. I think that would be hard to replicate. <laughs> they can do anything. I have faith in them. True. I mean, they do do those girls and like those, you know, karate shots where it's flipping around them, like on action figures. I don't know how they do that. They do it. Then they sell like crazy, apparently. And, you know, another show, and we actually recently got the soundtrack on the station. So the timing for this is really nice, uh, okay. was Redline. Oh, yeah. Which was really kind of, it's kind of a psychedelic sort of show that's the best word i can think of for it you know i have redline i picked it up the other day and i have it sitting uh you know on the the desk in the bedroom basically and i still haven't put it in yet so i I still have yet to find that perfect night to watch it so i haven't seen it yet um i hope it's good Uh, the animation i saw was amazing on it so it looked great um i play a character i think named johnny boya i think is his name johnny Mm -hmm. boya um, it was a quick, you know, it was a quick, uh, you know, like one day session for me, but I had a good time on it and, uh, it's glad to be a part of it. I mean, anything that looks that great, uh, we don't see as many of those, you know, full fledged, you know, anime features, uh, where they really spend time on the animation. So it's, it's nice when you get the chance. 
Yeah, it looked really detailed and uh, something that someone somewhere had spent a, a lot of time on instead of just like, well, we need a cookie cutter thing together. Let's put a few stereotypes in here and throw it in a blender. Well, that's the best way, I think, is grab stereotypes and throw them in a blender. That's how I do all my writing. So, you know. <laughs> but I will say, if you get a chance to watch it anytime soon, definitely listen to the music. The music is really interesting and there's some pieces in there that are in English uh, that really seem to tie the whole thing together. So really it, love that. It interesting, it's interesting. Good. Okay. So you had that pause before you said interesting and that could have meant, you know, you know, well, it's, it, you know, you know, like when you're going out on a date, a blind date and then, Oh, she's, uh, uh, she's interesting. And you go, Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Great. Well, let me rephrase. It's like Japanese interesting because there's some tracks that are really, really awesome. And other tracks you're like, what were they doing? Like dubstep metal here? I don't know what this was. Wow, dubstep metal. That sounds, uh, that does sound interesting. You did use a good word then. Yes, I, I couldn't think of much else to describe it, but uh, if, you, if you get a chance, I highly recommend keeping an ear open for the music. I will. One, one ear for everything else, for the voices and the effects, and I'll keep one ear for the music. Now, have you heard much um, in terms of fan reaction to, the, to Redline? I, no, I have not yet. I actually, I haven't done a, a convention in a while. I have a few coming up. So that's usually where I can gauge that when I'm at a convention. Um, people come up and they have their copy to sign or they just want to tell me they loved it or what have you. Um, I mean, that's where, I'm, where I'll gauge it. So at this point, I know I haven't heard anything about Redline. I hope people are enjoying it. Well, I've seen a lot of positive reactions for it, and a lot of people were bugging me to get the music on. So I'm assuming that it's really uber popular, because if they're bugging me for something, you know, I'm going to assume. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. And now Chris informed me, as he is, because he's uh -oh. the only one I know that keeps on track of like the Naruto's and the bleaches and. Oh great! What did the, he say? He said that your your guy eventually comes back. In Bleach, uh, Stark, he eventually comes back, I believe, in like another two months, is what he informed me of. I don't know how you keep track of that, Chris, wherever you are on the interwebs, but... Uh, I watch it. <laughs> oh, wait, there he was for a second. He watches, oh. Yes, he watches. That's, that's one way to do it. Yeah, that uh, Bleach is a trip because I actually was just... I listened to uh, briefly a little bit of our interview we did before, and I had just started playing Stark when we did the other interview and he's, I mean, he's not in that many episodes. I mean, he's probably only, I mean, that I've done so far. I mean, maybe he's in seven, eight episodes or so. It doesn't seem like a lot anyway. It's amazing that I had just started doing him like two years ago when we had the original interview and he still hasn't, you know, bit the dust yet. He's still around. Um, I guess the filler episodes had something to do with that. Well, that's always good for a franchise. You want to make sure you're not a character that's killed off. <laughs> well, he is. I think when he, I think his whole, you know, stay on the show is probably only, you know, 10, 15 episodes or something, which is amazing that it's taken two, two and a half years, you know, to get around to those 10, 15 episodes that Stark's actually in. So, well, now I, I have to wonder with a big franchise like Bleach, um, understanding that there's so much like filler in it, do you ever, right. you know, get to a point where you're like, come on, show that one part I did like a year ago? <laughs> You know, it's it's kind of funny because um, I didn't understand what filler meant in terms of Bleach when they were doing the uh, on Bleach. For those who watched, they were doing the Bount arc, and I played a character named Mabashi in the Bount arc. And I I watched the arc. I had never really seen Bleach before, and I was watching it, and I thought, oh, this is kind of cool. And I heard all the fans complaining about, oh, this is terrible. It's just filler episodes. We hate this stuff. And I didn't understand that. Now, flash forward to recently, I I. Recorded some Stark. I'm watching Bleach. Okay, Stark gets introduced. I'm like, cool, cool, cool. And then uh, this whole side plot comes in that has absolutely nothing to do with what was going on in the story. And that lasts for about a year. And so someone explained to me, like, that's what filler is. It just comes up and it interrupts the show. And then you go right back to where you were like six months later. So now I understand why the fans are like, ah, oh, filler, because they want the actual story that's, you know, in, in the original writing. So now I get it. I get it, everyone. Well, at least you got to feel like a, a fan, a frustrated fan for... Yeah. For I was like, what's going on? Who are these people? Where are the characters I was following? <laughs> Why are they here? I don't know. I, c I can't keep track of it. Like, once you get to past, like, the 200, 300 episode threshold, I'm like, 
confused. I've forgotten yeah. what's happened in the first 100 episodes. <laughs> yeah, that was my problem with Bleach. I, I, the first time I watched, I was already, it was already in the 100 something the first time I saw an episode. So I had a lot of catching up to do that I didn't have time to do. So, um, you know, I can get by for a little while. I just, I couldn't explain the show to anyone. There's no way. Well, you know what really amazes me is when the anime fans out there will be like, okay, well, I finally want to get into this. And so they do like an anime watching binge of sorts. And they'll yeah. just watch a show like for a week straight and and be caught up. And that just boggles my mind. In my, in my younger days, I, I know I did that with, uh, I did that with like, Robotech back in the day. We used to do that every now and then. We, uh, you know, every six months, eight months or something like, okay, we're just going to watch them all. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, there, I, there's no way I can do that. I would. <laughs> it sounds like fun, but I don't know when I would find the time to do it. I what? don't even play video games anymore. It's sad. It's very no. sad. I know, right? Ah. Well, I will say that I did do that once, and that was actually kind of recently, so I can understand a little bit, but it wasn't with anime. It was with mm. South Park. I was sick for two weeks, and I couldn't get out of bed, but I had to have something going on in the background, so, you know, I'm not just in bed. So I spam watch South Park. <laughs> Between well, the that was the best. You had the best excuse. I mean, that's perfect. You don't want to be sick, but you know, if you happen to be sick and you're bedridden for a couple of weeks, and of course, you get, you're going to catch up on something, some show, every show, if you can. True. I think the only shows I keep track of now, I wait until they're completed with anime to be safe. <laughs> yeah, because you don't want them to just stop at mid, like you know, halfway through the second season. That, yeah, or, you know, they put in the filler or something along those lines. Or the dubbing stops for a little bit for the longer series um, mm -hmm. due to licensing reasons, which I understand, but I don't want to wait. So I'd rather just wait for it to be done before I start it. I don't blame you. What, don't commit until you know you can get through it. Exactly. And for all the listeners out there, I hope you're staying tuned to 91.8 The Fan, because if you're not, I'm going to go beat you up. But we're going to take a very short break, so keep your ears tuned to your favorite station where we play everything you want and nothing you don't. Hey, everybody out there, you're still tuned to 91.8 The Fan, and if you weren't, well, I slapped you during the commercial break. You can, you'll feel I, it now. I heard that. Yeah, I heard it. The slap. It was loud. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we were talking a little bit behind the scenes for those of you who can't hear, which is none of you, <laughs> about, you know. <laughs> oh, yes. I need to use that as, like, a sound effect for the future now. <laughs> but for any, you know, projects that you want the listeners to know about, anything that, you know, recently came out that you can talk about or anything that you've been working on that you can talk about we know those wonderful ndas have you strapped uh yeah there of course there are always things i can't talk about but there are some things uh that are you know on now and i'm currently working on i can talk about so uh some current projects uh show called monsuno that is uh, actually original animation although it's uh, it very much looks like anime and that's on nicktoons uh i think it's on hiatus right now maybe it's on saturday mornings but generally speaking it's thursday nights uh, so look out for Monsuno. Very cool show. Um, also, Tron Uprising, which is also Thursday nights on Disney XD. I do uh, kind of additional voices on Tron Uprising. So uh, you can play that fun game where you try to hear, try to listen for me. Because um, I don't play any real actual characters, but I'm in every episode. So you can make a game out of that. A drinking game or something. Whatever you want to do. Um, uh, Ice Age Continental Drift, which I think is still in the theaters. I... Myself and uh, three women played all the Hyraxes, which are the cute little uh, characters in that film, if anybody's seen it, that uh, are kind of like Ewoks. They're kind of like Ewoks in the plot is how they work. Those <laughs> silly Hyraxes. That's how they are. That's and they don't adorable. Speak English. Yeah, they're kind of cute. Um, what else? What else? Um, on the anime front, a uh, new show I'm working on, which they've already announced. Uh, usually they don't do this. They don't announce so soon, and I can't talk about it, but uh, I'm working on a show called Lagrange. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it, Lagrange. Uh, play a character named Villa Julio. Uh, also, Nura, Rise of the Yokai Clan, another one. I think those are both from Viz Anime. Um, I play Zen in that show, so those are current. Current things happening. See, I've got some info, some current info. Um, that's nice, because yeah. most people, they, they have to put red tape over their mouth, because they're like, no, I don't want to die. I don't care. I'm going to talk about it anyway. It doesn't matter. Go ahead and try to stop me. Uh, I'm still working on Bleach because uh, Stark is still going strong. Um, all my other characters on Bleach have died, but <laughs> but Stark's still going. I think I've killed off um, 
honestly, uh, I think six characters since I started doing Stark. I've killed off six other characters on Bleach. Well, Something maybe, like that. maybe if you just give like the casting director like a like a fruit basket, they'll have you on as another three other characters that might die in the future. That's that's you know you know what I live for. That's that's my dream. That is that is the dream, and I, I that's a good idea. I'll try that. Um, what else? What else? Um, video games uh, that are out. Uh, Transformers: Fall of Cybertron just came out by Activision. Uh, I play uh, reprise my role as Rumble in that, and I also play uh, Blast Off. Who's uh, that's a new character for me? Who I just found out recently uh, was actually an original character too. You think I would know that, but I didn't. In well, other words, I'm I'm redoing a character that was already established. I, I didn't know. I just thought it was a new character. Well, to be fair, the director is supposed to tell you those things. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, I'm saying I I didn't. It's interesting when the game comes out and then you see like a voice comparison online, and you're like, with who? Who are they comparing me to? Oh, the original. There was an original. Ah, okay. So it's it's always interesting to know. Afterwards, after the fact. Well, it's nice to see that you're doing research after the fact, even if it's <laughs> coincidental. <laughs> it, it was, yeah, I like that. You make it sound like research. It's, no, it was totally 100% coincidental. So, um, what else? What else? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what else I can talk about. A lot of there's there's stuff I'd love to tell you about. Um, in another month, maybe I could tell you some more stuff. But right now, I can't. Well, in the future, you can always let us know, and we'll let the listeners know, because they love to stalk their favorite voice actors in a nice way. But for the listeners who might not have heard our previous interview, uh, do you do the social media thing? What's your Twitter? What's your Facebook? What's your address? I mean, I mean, just your, your website. Uh, website is uh, just KeithSilverstein.com. It's, I have a convenient name. Unlike, say, you know, Christopher Smith, it's very difficult to then get ChristopherSmith.com. Uh, but KeithSilverstein.com was open, so I've got it. Um, Facebook is uh, Keith Silverstein Voice Artist. Uh, and you know what? I just recently, I've been fighting Twitter. I mean, really fighting it, like with armor and everything um, and uh, lethal weapons. And I was winning the fight until recently. I finally said, you know what? I'm going to try Twitter. I'm just going to go ahead and make an account. And I did. And... Like, literally, like, three days later, my account was hacked, and it's been hacked about four times since. Oh, my gosh. How did that... You, you don't know how that happened or anything? I, I have no idea. Listen, I literally know nothing about Twitter. Twitter seems like a mini Facebook to me. I, I don't get it because it's like, well, why wouldn't I just use Facebook? Why would I use Twitter? It doesn't do as much. Uh, and I know people love it. I know. I mean, you know, feel free to contact me and, and tell me why Twitter's awesome because I don't get it yet. So I, I never post on Twitter because I don't, I don't understand it and I keep getting hijacked. Maybe you should make a really difficult password and then write it down on a sticky note. <laughs> I, you know, I tried that. So, well, I, I, hopefully the new one I, I have will, is working. I don't think I've been hacked recently. But it just seemed like, you know, a fa I've had Facebook forever now for years and, you know, I had no problems with that. And of course, like a couple days into Twitter, trouble on the horizon. So that sucks. Well, hopefully, Twitter fans, you can follow him and give him encouragement. That way he will post more on his Twitter. Yeah, you have to sell me on it. So sell me. And the best way to sell me on it is actually to go to Keith Silverstein voice artist on Facebook because that's where <laughs> I'll be listening. So <laughs> go there, sell me on Twitter. And then if, if you're successful, then I'll, I'll jump on over too. Why not? Well, now you actually said you had a lot of events um, coming up. Can you let the listeners know about that so they can stalk you outside of your hotel room? Why, yes, Jackie, I can. In fact, I will let you know. Coming up, uh, another anime convention in Manchester, New Hampshire. That's October 19th through the 21st. I've never been there. I'm excited about that one. Also, Anime Nebraska, which I've been to a couple times before. I think this is my third time returning. In Omaha, Nebraska, November 2nd through the 4th. Come visit me there. And the last one that's coming up soon is Anime USA. Very American sounding. Washington, D.C., November 19th through the 12th. I expect to see each and every one of you at each and every one of those conventions. That reminds me of like a Disney voice, like when you're getting on the ride, getting off the ride. <laughs> Please keep your hands and arms inside the ride at all times. Por favor, si su mano se de la mano de la 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 That was my mumble Spanish. As you can see, I, I don't speak fluent, fast Spanish. It's okay, I don't speak any other language, and sometimes I don't even speak English, so... <laughs> That, that might uh, pose a problem sometimes with what you do, right? Eventually, but so far people just laugh at me, and I think that's a good thing. As long as well, they stay tuned in. <laughs> yeah, they stay tuned in. They're enjoying themselves. That's, that's what counts. Exactly. That's what matters. 
Well, now for the for the conventions, you get to go back, um, you know, over and over again. Is that always nice? Because it's almost like a home away from home. Like, oh, I've done this before. This won't be weird. <laughs> well, actually, when I started, I signed like four year contracts. I, I really messed up. I shouldn't have done it, but uh, I'm kind of locked in. It's, um, I, you know, I had my lawyer look over the paperwork, and there's really nothing I can do. So. I kind of have to go back. No, I'm full of it. That's not true. That's not true. Um, uh, no, I enjoy very much going back. Or I would say no. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have a good time. And uh, it's good to see, you know, a lot of the same people uh, that are running the conventions as well as the fans. Um, you know, every time I go back, though, I think, well, they, I've already been there. And, you know, they're not going to want to come to my panels because they've seen them. Or they're not going to come to the autograph session. But you know what? Everybody shows up. And I have a great time every time. So... You know, I'll keep doing them. Oh, that must feel really cool. Just to be it like, is. it's nice. I don't know if they'll show up, but then they do in droves and they want to glomp you and um, have locks of your hair. And I haven't had that happen yet. Um, that's a good that thing, Matt. interesting. Yes. You should have. Yeah, I don't know. It hasn't gotten that scary. That's, <laughs> I, I might rethink this if they were like, can I have some of your hair? And uh, to be honest, that one's kind of a new one. I, I actually haven't seen that one in real life. I've seen Can I Lick Your Hand in real life. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. yeah. But not to give you, not to make you afraid of the fans. Most are pretty sensible. But there's one or two oddballs just like there are in the entire world. So. Yeah, that would take me by surprise. I wouldn't expect that. It, you know, I'm not, I'm not a member of the Beatles. I mean, you know, it would be weird wanting locks of my hair. It'd be weird to want one of the Beatles locks of hair. But I mean, I, I get it with that. You know, I get it with, uh, you know, somebody that big, that famous, that historic but <laughs> voice actors? I don't know. <laughs> well, now, for the listeners out there, are, is there any words of advice you want to give them? Maybe dating advice, maybe voice acting advice, maybe have a good day and I love you, whatever you want. <laughs> dating advice? My goodness. Uh, I, c I don't think I can give dating advice. I've, I've been married almost two years now, so um, I, 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 dating would be like, I have no idea what that is anymore. I'm not, you could, somebody could give me dating advice just for, just for giggles, you know, just to remind me. But, um, no, um, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Uh, advice for, okay, this is Keith Silverstein's advice for dating. Don't, don't go on a date with anyone you don't want to go on a date with. If you stop wanting to date someone, then stop dating them. How's that? I think that's very good advice. Yeah, it was pretty, it was deep. I don't know if that was too, too deep for, uh. For your show, I, I hope I hope it wasn't. I hope it was okay. I think the listeners will be okay, and if they have any further questions, they'll bug you on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think you can go wrong with that. That's uh, that's pretty sound advice. I, I will agree, especially just coming out of a well, no, came out of last relationship I had was in 2010. I'm okay. <laughs> Maybe I do yeah. need dating advice. <laughs> yeah, see, see, that's where that came from. You want dating advice? <laughs> to be fair, I, I say things that have happened before. So somebody, when I said, do you have any last words, gave dating advice. It happens. 360 yeah. people. I guess so. I didn't think about uh, last words. I, I don't want anything I say to be my last words, though. That's the thing. Well, you didn't break NDA, so I think you'll be fine. <laughs> I, ho I hope so. I hope I'm good. Um, yeah, I want to I tease, tease you guys with something, though. Uh, I, I, I got a game coming out later this month and uh it's coming out so soon that i can probably just tell you the title of it oh if you're okay with that as long as you won't I'm okay get in with trouble it. yes i'm okay with it uh dead or alive five Ooh, exciting mm -hmm. so that's that's all i'll give you though i'll just give you a title i figure it's coming out at the end of this month i can i can give you guys that much well we appreciate gonna it have trouble with that well we yeah. appreciate it and we'll try not to investigate it before it comes out <laughs> <laughs> well, there's trailers out and stuff like that already, so I'm not I'm not spilling the beans too much. But I, I thought I'd give you the inside scoop, at least a little, a small scoop. Well, we appreciate it, and any scoops of ice cream, I mean, news is awesome. So, <laughs> thank you so much for coming back on the show. It was a lot of fun to talk to you again. Thank you so much for having me. I had a good time. And for anybody out there that missed any of this interview, don't fret. You can find it on the website within the next few days. So keep your eyes peeled to 918thefan.com and your ears tuned to 91.8, where we play everything you want and nothing you don't.